Hey everyone, welcome back to Tired Old Queen at the Movies. Happy Pride! Steve's got a great movie for us this month. Let's go check it out. Ooh, Johnny, it's Gay Pride! Come on in! I thought that I would finally break down for Gay Pride Month and do a movie that my friends have been begging me to do on Tired Old Queen at the Movies forever. 1939, George Cukor's The Women, starring Norma Shearer, Paulette Goddard, Joan Crawford, Rosalind Russell, and the incredible Mary Boland. Now, this movie was taken from a play by Claire Booth Luce, which ran 666 performances on Broadway. When they bought it, they gave the screenplay to Anita Luz. Anita Luz just brought it up a notch. She had written Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. She'd also written the screenplay for San Francisco. So she was really on top of her game, and she really knew how to throw in wisecracks. Let me see. Yes. <gasps> Good grief. I hate to tell you, dear, but your skin makes the Rocky Mountains look like chiffon velvet. Cukor had a reputation of being a woman's director, which is kind of dumb. Uh, yes, he was gay and he worked very well with his actresses, but he also brought Ronald Coleman and Rex Harris into Oscars. Charles Boyer got an Oscar nomination for Gaslight under Cukor's direction. So he was just an all-around great. <laughs> L'amour! L'amour. He was also one of the few that the actresses respected so much that they wouldn't get at each other's throats. Oh, 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 and in the case of Norma Shearer and Joan Crawford, this was a problem. Joan was incredibly jealous of Norma Shearer because she was married to Irving Thalberg, who was the boy wonder at MGM, and she thought that Thalberg was feeding uh, Norma all the good parts, which he kind of was. But Joan Crawford was always playing the shop girl who came from the other side of the tracks and built herself up. Nonsense, my dear. Pretty girl like you with all the rich men that float in here. I'm afraid when they come to this counter, they have other women on their mind. Uh, I shouldn't think you'd let that disturb you. By the time the women rolled around, Crawford's career was in trouble. Um, she had been labeled box office poison, along with Marlena Dietrich and Katherine Hepburn, and she didn't know how to save her career. She went after this part of this bitchy socialite Crystal Allen in this movie, and they finally relinquished and gave it to her. Say, listen, I've worked too hard to land this meal ticket to make any false moves now. Rosalind Russell desperately wanted to play Sylvia, who's the main troublemaker in this movie. It had been played on Broadway by Ilka Chase, and that's who they were going to go with. Roz auditioned, went to Cukor and said, I want this part. And he said, but Roz, you can't play comedy. And Roz said, oh, 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 you don't know that, George, you don't know that. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> She came in to him and did it 12 different ways, entirely different ways. The last one, she was chewing gum and she was really all over the place, kind of wild, and he said, that's what I want. Take a good grip on yourself, you're going to die. Stephen Haynes is stepping out on Mary. What? And she said to him, are you kidding me? Norma and Joan are going to kill me. He said, it doesn't matter. That's what I want. We want to, you are a home wrecker. You are wrecking a marriage of a woman with a child. You cannot be evil. They have to go along with you. They have to think you're funny. And you are hysterical. A good piece of scandal like that, not a chance. Give me the soap. Why, that girl never stops talking. You know how those creatures are. Babble, 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 babble. Never let up for a minute. A lot. They care whose lives everyone. Ten cents a cake. Well, of course, it's all right to be homespun in the country, but really. Every Everybody wanted to be in this movie because there were no men in this movie. Even the animals that they used in this movie were all females. No, you can't trust any man. Now, they brought in a few of the Broadway people did make it into the movie. Not all of them, but a, but a few. And uh, Marjorie Main was one of them. I hate Reno. You didn't come for fun. The gray will decay you and turn you to nuts. Drink one word of twenty, the poor girl can trust. Denny Moore plays the manicurist in the Black's Fifth Avenue, which is where Mary Haynes comes, Norma Shearer, to get her manicure. Well, she's already been set up by Rosalind Russell, who found out from the same manicurist that Norma Shearer's husband's fooling around. So when Norma Shearer sits down, Denny Moore comes in and she's got this, oh, I do love to have a new customer. And I always think it puts a girl on her metal. Do you know that, Mrs. Haynes? We feel awful sorry for her anyway. Her husband is running around with that Crystal Allen who works at Black's Fifth Avenue. She's got those eyes that run up. And down a man like a searchlight. She's an awful man trap. She's an awful. And she goes on and on, and she is absolutely phenomenally fabulous. Then they've been inseparable practically every evening. Oh, did I hurt? Jungle red, I suppose. Or one coat or two. 
<laughs> and on top of that, there's Mary Bolin. Mary Bolin, when they meet her on the train, the Countess, and she pulls Mary Hayne, she pulls Norma Shearer and Paula Goddard, who she, they're all going to Reno for divorces. And she goes, oh man, what does it get you but on the train to Reno? None of my other husbands ever left me a dime, except the first of Mr. Strauss. He said the sweetest thing, I'll never forget it. He said to Flora, I leave all my worldly possessions at to be administered by executives because she, is an A1 schlemiel. Married, divorced, married, divorced. Oh, l'amour, l'amour. That's French for love. I was lucky enough to play this countess a few years ago at Town Hall, and when the wonderful Charles Bush played the Norma Shearer part, and, and Lipsinka played the Joan Crawford part, and I got, ow, oh, to play the countess, which I loved, one of my favorite things I've ever done. <laughs> Norma Shearer and Joan Crawford hated each other. They were real, really good behavior through this until it came to this one scene where they had in the powder room and they had to go back and forth for their close-ups. So one of them had to be behind the camera and feed the other one the close-ups. And when Norma Shearer was doing her, her scenes, Joan Crawford sat behind with her knitting and kept doing making noise with these knitting needles. And finally, Cukor said, you're not gonna pull this on my set. You apologize, and Crawford said, I won't, I won't. She's, she's high-handed me for years and walked off the set. Well, Joan came back. Sorry, but I don't think I know you. I believe it's my husband you know. Oh. So Stevens told you. No. He's never mentioned you. Miss Allen, here's the blue negligee Here you are. Stay out of here. Cukor said that the first day of shooting, Norma Shearer and Joan Crawford's limousines just kept circling the studio because they weren't going to be the first one to get out of the car. Finally, George Cukor had to go out and get them both and bring them in, you know. May I suggest if you're dressing to please Stephen? Not that one. He doesn't like such obvious effects. Thanks for the tip. But when anything I wear doesn't please Stephen, I take it off. Roz, though, Roz pulled the best. Roz waited till about just before the movie was finished shooting, and she knew that this she was going to clean up with this movie. And she got sick, and she went to her house, her beach house, and her doctor said she was too sick to show up. So Hans Stromberg got on the phone to her and said, ah, what do you think would entice Miss Russell to come back? Well, I don't know, but she told me this morning that if she had her name above the title with Joan Crawford and Norma Shearer, that, that might make her feel well enough to come back. So they went to Norma Shearer, and Norma Shearer acquiesced, and she got her name above the title. It was smaller than anybody else's, but it was Norma Shearer, Joan Crawford, Rosalind Russell in The Women. This movie is fast, funny, stylish. It's a little dated. Dolly, stick around. <laughs> Something's gonna pop. Good and dirty. Its morality is a little dated. Mary Hayne, haven't you any pride? <laughs> no pride at all. That's a luxury a woman in love can't afford. But it is one of the funniest, most enchanting, endearing comedies that ever came out of 1939. And you are going to fall in love with Norma Shearer, Joan Crawford, Rosalind Russell, Paulette Goddard, Florence Nash, Denny Moore, Marjorie Maine, and the amazing Mary Bolin in George Cukor's classic, The Women. Oh, in the suite. Let's all go to the lobby. But even Cukor said later, I don't know how we got away with these Adrian costumes. You know, they show up for their everyday work and they look like, you. oh my God, you know. Every drag queen's wet dream is in this movie for costumes. The popcorn can't be beat.